Fabino, what's Fabino? Zeke Black is in the building. Um, today's a different show. A few weeks back, um, I seen something on Gordo's page, um, the Rock Nation Gordo, and um, he was posting something about Fat Danny, a, 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 an individual that was part of a crew called in the Bronx, the Wild Cowboy. I know a little bit about their case because one of my good friends actually somewhat got caught up in that case. He has 45 to, 45 to life. For those that know Rashid Rice, that's, that was a good friend of mine. So actually, he was around me before he actually got caught up in the case. So, you know, there's a little salute. So that's how I know Fat Dan. Not Fat Dan, but that's how I know about Rashid. Rashid always spoke about them because that's the crew that he grew up with. He just happened, I met him in Albany, New York, but he was in a group home. And we go to certain group homes, they send you to the local schools. And I went to Albany High for one year. That's why I met Rashid and a few other guys. Um, it was a wild crew, man. You know, it was a wild time. And that's, when I started the Bronx, it was a wild time. We're talking about Brook Ave, Cypher Sad, Beekman, 138th, St. Anne's. It was about the South Bronx. You know, Patterson, Millbrook Projects. That area was crazy. If you was outside, that whole, that, that just, that corridor of the Bronx was dangerous. Like, when I said South Bronx, I, I spoke about that part of South Bronx. And that's, you know what I'm saying? It was the murder capital. There's a lot of names that came off those territories. A lot of crews, like Pure Terror, um, Obsession, just names. Nine and a half, you're in a certain area in the South Bronx. So I'm just giving you the, the, the geographics of what I'm speaking about. Now, other than the ham on tree, we're kind of the own host brother. Shout out to Fat Joe out there, you know what I'm saying? Tell the squad. Um, yeah, the crew called the Wild Cowboys. Dominican crew, that team, they was getting busy. A lot of pain. So, when I was on Rikers Island, I was locked up with um, a couple of them. First, with Chulo, which is why she's coded, coded for it. I was there when he first snatched him up for the police line of for the situation he's locked up now for. That's the early 90s. Then, when I went to Rikers Island in 95, I happened to be in the same dorm, dorm of the cell block as Mercedes. I don't know which one was telling, but the, one of the bosses was telling. The, one of the Sepulito or Alito brothers was telling. I don't know if it was Lenny or the other one, but one of them was telling. And um, he was telling on the crew about the bodies and such and such and such and such. Now, Fat Danny name always came up in the conversation. Now, this is what I mean about doing crime when crime goes all the wrong way. We're speaking, we're speaking about a bunch of homicides, so we have to be very clear that, um, you know, we have to show respect to the dead. You know what I'm saying? The case, no matter how much, how crazy it was in the South Bronx, allegedly that some guys was coming home from a club in Manhattan on the West Side Highway, and they were shooting a Uzi or something, and they killed a college kid or a kid that has some money, who family loved him. And it turned out to be that the bullet the bullets that killed the guy, that's, no, the bullets that shot the guy was also with the same type of bullets that was involved with some type of murder in the Bronx with the Uzi. <laughs> and that's how he tracked it to them. Homicide deeds, got involved from Manhattan to the Bronx, and then they began to investigate them. And as the more and more they began to investigate them, they unraveled other homicides. And this is where we at now, the Wild Cowboys. See, most of you might have heard about the Wild Cowboys from the rapper Sadat X. It's about the crew, you know what I'm saying? And so it did that, they was more so crack ever. You know, the, the Krills out. Now, with Fat Danny, 
This is 19, no, 2014, 2014. And I guess the man did an article with the New York Daily News. An article was written in the New York Daily News about Fat Dan. Exactly. Notorious gangland terror Daniel, Fat Danny, Rincon is fighting for his freedom. Yeah, Rincon's wrong. legal team claims he was wrongly pinned to a 1991 quadruple slaying that was carried out by competing crack dealers while he was really working for a Warren crew. Rincon, 43, who was sentenced in 1995 to 158 years to life, says he was not a bad boy of the Red Top Gang a group dubbed the Wild Cowboys that terrorized Beekman Avenue in the Bronx in the 1980s and 1990s while raking in $16 million a year. Instead, he ruled with Orange Top, a rival group, he says. Lawyers for Rincon, including one who helped free Derek Deacon in Brooklyn last year, submitted statements from admitted participants in the Quad murders saying Rincon wasn't involved in the December 16, 1991, drug territory strike. Other witnesses say in statements that Rincon was on a call with his jailed brother when shots were fired. Attorney Patrick Joyce, who filed a lengthy motion in May, wrote that Rincon's false connection to the quad murders led to spillover prejudice and wrongful convictions on another gang murder and conspiracy charges. He's asking Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Daniel Fitzgerald to toss the quad slay convictions and order a new trial on all others. Prosecutor Jody Kane fired back in court papers, saying eyewitnesses directly placed defendant at the crime scene playing an active role in the deadly ambush. She said Rincon was a wild cowboy from 1988 when he managed crack sales and practiced his marksmanship with other red top employees by shooting at passing cars and pedestrians. Now that's this is this is this is this this was a newspaper article that was speaking upon that. Now there's some people that say that he really was down with the competition. Some people allege that they actually shot him. He was shot by them, the Red Top crew. I don't know what years he ran with them, what years he didn't, but there's a word on the compound on the streets that he was shot allegedly by one of them. Um do I know he was down with the Red Top crew? I don't know. But one thing I'm going to say is that um, when, when Nelson or Lenny, one of them, one of, one of the two brothers, one of, the, one of the two brothers told, he most likely he gave some information on that. Also, they had a little eye on this little young boy that they had to snatch him and move around in his family because he said he'd seen the situation. Whatever the case may be. Now, there's another guy that I think his last name was Stokes. Some one of their co-defendants, he wound up getting in the pill because they he had some time and they wound up giving him some time back because he wasn't down with the wild cowboys. He actually got caught with their case and he was able to play himself. So that's the same lane that Fat Danny's going through. It's the lane that the guy went through. I think his last name was Stokes. Something y'all know the name. Y'all from, from the South Bronx. But he gave some time back because he was able to prove that he wasn't actually down with the Wild Cowboys. Now, um, you know, the streets is a dirty game. We have fun in these streets. We do things in these streets. You know, we go crazy. But we have to keep in mind that there, there's consequences to everything that we do. The one thing that we definitely don't want to do is have our name caught up in nonsense like this. They gave the man 150 years of life. He's been in jail since like 9-5, 9-4, Just imagine you went to jail all that time for, for a body you didn't catch. It's crazy, right? Now, his father, to my knowledge, his father just passed away, man. So as, he, as this man sit in jail, He's losing family members. You know what I'm saying? Family members. He's 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 losing he's losing family members, man. This is what happens. That's the one thing about this about the game, about jail on the streets. 
is that you will lose family members. Now, this is from Fat. This is from um, King A was in the building was popping. Now, this is from Godo Rock. Godo Rock is part of Rock Nation. He has a, a he puts up on this page 150 year sentence for a crime he did not commit. And this is Fat Danny calling from jail. Shout out to Rock Nation. Shout out to shout out to Godo. killers even said he wasn't there and um you know it's it's wicked how the criminal justice system works you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying yes because that's that's you know we have, we have to we have to understand that when you got people just saying that's part of the crime like you didn't do with it it's a dirty game man this is serious it's a dirty game man that's Fat Daddy speaking right there. He the newspaper article had. I'm bringing your audio so y'all can listen to this, man. He got locked up doing a mass incarceration error when they just wanted to um, close cases. And police did it dirty, man. It's a dirty game, man. Not when the people that's the, the, like, also got out 200 years. It's like, nah, son had nothing to do with this. He had nothing to do with this. That's messed up, man. So they, so they, so they just don't want to let him go because it's gonna look bad for the city. It's gonna look bad for that precinct. It's gonna look bad for those cops. See, back then it wasn't no. Back then the homicide deeds was dirty, man. They played a dirty game. They played dirty, nasty tricks. And there's a lot of guys that told before you even got to the grip. Priest, dudes is telling their mother house, yo, I ain't had it out. And a lot of times that's what come back to bite dudes, man. DNA work wasn't the way DNA, the, the DNA work now, then it's the way DNA work now. So they have to really go for word of mouth and eyewitnesses. The fingerprint game was old school. A lot of times they play the free, 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 the, 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 the free and free game, beat you, have some manipulation. You saw, yeah, the gun is mine. Because <laughs> back then, it was, it's, like, it's like possession. They got to prove that you're in possession of something. Now, if you say those drugs are yours, they don't even need to prove the possession. You said it's yours. Now, you get, what, you, you get what I'm going at? I don't know if that's what Fat Daddy did when he got locked up. I don't, I, I don't know what his discovery is. I just know that there were a bunch of other individuals that's involved with the case, like now he didn't do with it. Even the family of one of the victims, well, I mean, that says a whole lot, man. That says a whole lot. I mean, I, you know, you know, we, we, we have to look at the way the game is changing, the way the rules is changing, the way we're looking at the world. You know, this is another Latino brother. Just because you're Latino doesn't mean we have to. He doesn't matter. 
Because he could be one of us. He could be one of us, man. He came from the mass incarceration. Have you seen? He said he locked up at 9 3. Definitely a dirty game. Definitely a dirty game. The cloth was different. The mathematics was different. I told you, they played dirty games, man. Salute. I'm giving you this game from Gordo's page, this one. Rock Nation. Um, like I told you, man, my only thing, what I know about the Wild Cowboys is my friend Rashid Rice, he's got 45 years to life. You know what I'm saying? His his code of is Chulo. If you buy the book Wild Cowboys, the, the name is in, is in the book. They're in the book because they actually got caught doing something crazy and they shot two brothers. One died and one's paralyzed. Rashid Rice. That was, like I told you, I was with him before he even got, when they, before they snatched him for the situation. I was around him. Free Rawa, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the penitentiary, incarceration. I mean, I mean, a lot of these dudes been in and out of group homes. Um, while she, like I said, while a little look, someone, someone in my face. While she just did five years. You know what I'm saying? The game began to change. We we have this conversation all day. We speak about the gang culture of New York. We speak about the oppression. We speak about um, the Latin Kings and the Nietas and the Bloods and the and the and the and the, and the, and the, da -da 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 -dums and the DDPs. But we don't speak about how when Giuliani put NYPD all as one. Was a rap. Once he connected all the dots, transit, they all NYPD, but he, he took the separations out, the powers of the separations out the way. Everybody's be under one police commissioner, and I'm gonna be your boss. He reports to me, boom. He took so now he was able, salute. So now he was able. To help was what we call mass incarceration. Y'all see what's going on in Brooklyn with the with that dirty cop, the dirty detective. That's when they were they was on go trying to solve these cases. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The game done change. You got dudes that got a hundred, he got 150 years of life. There wasn't no cameras back there. How you give a man 150 years of life? No cameras, no nothing. Just a word of mouth. Just a word of mouth. You put together a jury, boom, guilty. Yeah, that's when, that's when, to me, to me, the game changed. Cause if there's no mass incarceration, there's no out, there's no, there's always something in jail, so you can't say that. I can't say that part, because you can't predict what goes on the penitentiary, but there's no, um, what's going on now? I mean, there was a point in time when you just sit on the block with a pack, the police are white, blue and white, so why pass you? They'll only jump out on you unless somebody physically called the police on you. Like, yo, he's making noise outside. They went up for you. You, you, you was more scared of the gun, the guns, the cars that cops are right around with guns, or the yellow cabs on the late night. Quality of your life, yes, sir, cuzzo. You was more fearful of that, even though we did have TNT. Don't get a twist. We'll talk about TNT. You still had TNT, 1990, 1991. But they wasn't, they didn't have a place to throw nobody. They wasn't, they wasn't trying to give you more than the one and three or one and three or four. Then something happened. A governor comes in, a Republican governor, governor out of peak scale. Now remember, 
you have mass incarceration. Before mass incarceration, you have Cuomo. TNT was still out. <laughs> TNT was roaming the streets. You were still able to get work release with body. You was able to take a three to six for a homicide. Most of these dudes that most most dudes you see up north, you may talk to somebody, yeah, son, this is my second body at point. So you got some dudes on their third body, and they finally got the bonus. Three to six, take that. Three to nine, take that. TNT will run up on you, throw you against the gate. So they did it, throw you on the gate. Then, there was a point in time when Lakers Island was full. But there was a lot of homelessness in New York City. New York City was going through a recession. New York State based the very board, in my eyes, New York City. But the party was still going on. People still found time to party. Then we had mass incarceration. And not just the TNT cells, they're trying to solve homicides now. New York City had like 2,000 bodies. They was trying to solve two, 300 bodies. They was trying to close so many cases. If, if you walk past the bodega and, I was, and, and somebody sees you, they had so many, some of these cases had the same eyewitnesses. That's how dirty the game was. We had police telling, yo, Number three in the police line, yeah, that's him. That's how dirty the game was, man. Yeah, that's how dirty the game was. When, when they first locked up the Wild Cowboys, they, they got caught up in that era of the crews begin to get snatched up. So when you're speaking upon this game war in jail, you got to keep in mind a lot of these dudes Already had issues in DFY, Tryon, um, Highland. All these groups, these dudes is already in the street over there. But then New York started doing these sweeps. Remember the Purple City crew in Taino? Um, there was no federal state case with the, with the state. They started locking these crews up out of nowhere. The Nasty Boys in the Bronx. Uh, wild uh, blind ad boys, some of them caught state cases, right? Remember? They started snatching the crews up. Oh, this is crazy. These, these, it wasn't, they, they started snatching them up. Wild cowboys, snatching them up. And I'm gonna tell you what's crazy. A lot of these crews we're speaking about are Dominican crews or Dominican base or Spanish base, like blind ad boys and nasty boys. They leave these, what, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans? Cream team, you ever remember that? They snatched them up. They started snatching the crews up. So now the streets that we that we brag about, this is what's in the penitentiary now. This is what's on Rikers Island now. Remember, you remember that the yellow taco, the YTCs, when he snatched them up, they started snatching the crews up. And they just wasn't going to jail for, 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 for drug sales. These guys, and some of them was going to jail for homicides. Take the homicide with you. He got two, three bodies. This was the ever of that, of those type of charges. The fat Danny got caught up in that. So mass incarceration just wasn't TNT bagging on the corner. They was doing block sweeps with these conspiracy theories. They were doing block sweeps, take the whole crew down. And what was helping they what was helping them out was they was able to attach bodies to these cases. Like the nasty boys and Brian Ab boys. There's at least 20 bodies. 20, 25 bodies between both crews. That's 25 cases solved. You know what I'm saying? So you caught the cloth. You caught the, the cloth that the, the, the young boys that were selling hair on for the Nicky Barneses and the Guy Fishes, you know, when they was 13, 12 years old. These are the guys now that they done got older, they b boying in, they break dancing, they, can't, I, I, they ain't get no money off of that dream. They back to the block, they sell the chicken bags of weed, they mean how to sell some dope, and then all of a sudden there's this drug that's clicking in the street, it's called cocaine. It's been out for a while, but now these young boys is touching it now.
And after, and after all those years of it just being a party thing, a new thing pops off called free bass crack. Oof, says to the group. Now these same young boys, these 17, 18, 19, they 21, 22, come on from up north for all the reasons. Probably party again, I could out the party ever. Now they come home and they, they, they turn their building into crack spots. The game changed. Nobody's seen this coming. Back then, you wasn't coming on your block with a bag of dope just open up. That wasn't happening. That was that's that wasn't happening. But see, with crack, you, you just knew how to fight. You had your rep up. You had this. You, you should, oh, open up. Just get some glizzies and just, just do it. Your streets started getting flooded. You could, you, had, you had access to do it. That dope that dope thing was already solidified. If you just wasn't gonna walk outside with a bundle of dope and say, "Yo, am I here today?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts. Putting TNT on the blocks and this, that, and third. So this is the element that's put to jail. So when you hear about the blood and Latin King Wars, a lot of these dudes that was in these wars was a part of, some of them was part of these crews. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was part of these organizations. A lot of these dudes had beef from the street. Wait, yo, you killed my brother. Your son, such and such killed him, and now you're all in jail together. The streets was the streets. A lot of times, a lot of you guys, y'all listen to the, the content, and y'all go, yo, this is a man that had 1500, who's been in jail since 1993, mass incarceration ever. There was one point in time when they got when they crack shit so crazy, they was like, fuck the guns. I mean, you still had the gun unit, but they wasn't even stressing the gun niggas. Like a nigga could, at any of it, I say, nigga, a dude could walk in a block with a four or fifth on him and not worry about police hopping. Because police, because they was chasing the drug dealer. Okay, that's, that was the roll call. Bush was on, get the drug dealer, get the drug dealer. We gotta show them the drug dealer, you're scared of us. So, of course, now they got the gun dudes out, oh, okay, it's on. Robberies is up, bodies is up. They're not stressing us, and they went back to, oh, oh, oh. Get back to these, too many guns is going off out here, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of a lot of dudes that were stick up kids, they began to hustle. The first four, five, the first three, four summers, at least first three, four, first three, it was a free for all with the crack game. Don't front, niggas was getting rich. Police was still checked. Police. We're still focusing on the hair on niggas. What made them take crack serious when they killed that cop? That's when he said, whoa, 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 whoa. This, this thing that went too far. Because bodies and mayhem always came together. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like I said, we speak about these things, we speak about these topics, man. If any of you guys know who Fat Danny is or his people, reach out to them, man. Um, I don't know the man personally. They've never been in the same space. Like I told you, I was on his Cody friend, Mercedes. I think he got he had like 60 years. I knew Rashi Rice. He got 45. I was locked up with Chulo. I was locked up with Chulo. He was in there for a gun when he allegedly just killed his brother. He was in pain over that shit. The knee snatched me for the police line. Like, yo, son, he just put a line up for, for the situation. Me and him got cool because that's supposed to be in Albany. I call it, I call it TNT. See, look how small the streets is. I walk to my projects, go on the East River to get a couple of good dollars with my cousin. Going through the D, I see my man, rest in peace, Jay. Jay, like, yo, Zeke, I'm about to go upstairs. Whatever the case may be, I did him a favor. Holding, holding his, his workers down. He said, we're going to get caught by TNT. And tells them, he did, he did it smooth though. He came back to, yo, he had to take his money, went back to the corner. I'm thinking, nothing of it, all right, whatever. TNT rushed to D in Washington. So I'm like, I ain't got to worry about that shit. I'm not on the app. They snatched me up. Yo, took the pocket, mark money. That's when I went to Rikers Island. So I'm going to tell you how I went to Rikers Island. On my way, doing a good favor from a, you know what I'm saying, let's a piece J slip. So I sat up for four months for that. Um, 
to Chulo, they sent me to the Sprungs. Chulo was in the Sprungs. I think it was either Sprung 1 or Sprung 3 was together. We got cool. Me and him, a couple of dudes from Brooklyn, we were fucked out. When I was on like this island, the box was big. That's when our box shit was real big. And MC Hammer was like number one with that. You can't touch this. Da, 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 da. That song was popping when I was sitting on like this island. He had the box. You had video music box, and he would play the box. I think the box was the one you could pay for certain songs to be played on the radio. That's when I was on like this island. But Deep Cover was the when he was playing Deep Cover. So y'all know the year. I'm sitting back. I mean, Chulo was cool. He from over there. Cypress and all that. To my all the money. Yo, see, there's mad money over there. Ah, ah, ah. So, you hear these crews getting snatched up. It was a different time, man. And there's a lot of casualties of war, a lot of prisoners of, of war. 158 years, man. Phew, for some shit you ain't do. Like I said, it's a ledge. They shot him back in the, you know what I'm saying? So they, they see what they tell you, they, they did some federal shit to him. Like, oh yeah, he wasn't down with them now, but you was down with them four summers ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's some Rico shit they did to him. But I heard the legend, they shot his ass. They shot him. Or they was plotting on killing him. But I heard they shot him before. So that's foul. You get hit. <laughs> you get 158 years. And you know somebody you probably want to kill. These are your co-defendants. You know what I'm saying? That's how dirty New York was. Look at the Brian Air Boys, Nasty Boys situation. Some of them are, some of them are colder fans and they want to kill each other. The dudes that's at Hunt's Point. A, a better geographical thing of that is watch, of that era, watch Hunt's Point on HBO documentary. That's that sort of time. Those are the dudes that was over there in that area. Top of the morning, Van Glory. Top of the morning. Um, like I said, for those that wasn't here, let me refresh the, the channel. Shout out to my man Push that um Bravo, cause Bravo, shout out to Bravo. Um, he, he be in Clubhouse, um, he some over there, Cypher like St. Anne's, you know what I'm saying? And it's funny how you meet somebody, right? Bravo's father was the priest of church that the Latin Kings King Tone used. And we seen the HBO documentary with the Latin Kings going to the church. That's Bravo Pops. You know what I'm saying? But definitely he represents, you know, he shows love to the wild cowboys. So I'm definitely to Bravo. This one's for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Definitely shout out to my man, Kings of God. Um, definitely uh, shooting mentality. You know, Jacob, OG Jacob. From Harlem, the OG, OG. Um, Stack, Stack City Doe. Push that knife. You know what I'm saying? My man iced out and all that. You see, this is the streets of New York. This is your one here. These, these, these are some of the consequences that came from the streets party people. This is real talk. When you hear the man speak, this is Gordito. This is Gordo. Gordito. Feed the wolves. Do I know Jaffa and Matt personally? Nah, but I know some dudes that was around him. You know what I'm saying? I know some people that was around him. I don't know Jaffa personally. Since my conviction in 1995, Shout out to Gordito, Gordo. Shout out to Gordo, man. Rock Nation, you know what I'm saying? Y'all all say, oh, they don't want to charge this over to the streets. Gordo's part of Rock Nation. You see, he's showing love to his peoples, man. It's a serious party, people. 
Um, cut those dice. You, you, you gave me, you know what I'm saying? You gave me a good point. They gave him time for crimes before he didn't do. You hear what he's you know what I'm saying? Well, that's how dirty the streets was. Homicide deeds is different. In my neighborhood, we had a guy that dealt with the guns. His name was Blondie. Blondie used to run around the 23rd Precinct. 23rd Precinct is also the precinct that had the situation with the Century Park Five. Also, the 23rd Precinct was the precinct that was involved with the movie French Connection, the same precinct. 23rd Precinct, because Pleasant Avenue is in East Harlem. For those that don't know the, 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 the geographical areas, Pleasant Avenue is in Spanish Harlem, which is 114th Street going towards Wagner. Actually, you, you could go into Wagner from Pleasant Avenue. But Wagner Projects. In East Harlem, Spanish Harlem. Got Jefferson Park, Rayo's restaurant right there on the corner. Manhattan Center, the school that Kelly Cam went to, and Mason, all of them, Manhattan Center. So I'm telling you, Blondie, was a, he chased you down with those guns. You drugs, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? He cut the violence out, I think, a lot because of. We just knew he was, he was heavy on the guns. Like I said, you're heavy on the sleeves and all this. He was heavy on the guns. You see Blondie coming, yo, get out of here. Dude, dude just expected the game. I ain't got time to play with Blondie. He had some dude that was still busting the gun, but it wasn't that, that crazy. That's why I said, when you died at certain points, oh, you had to do something. Because Blondie even thought, it's like he smelled the gun on you. <laughs> he jumped out, come here, stupid. If you was known as a shooter, he was on you. His answer to the street was to the shooters. We done seen him, he'll chase you down. That, that dude, he done chase some of the biggest gangsters through housing complexes. <laughs> Names y'all talk about. Yo, yo Blondie chased the nigga down and got him, got him for two guns. If you know there's a shooter, he jumping out on you. You got funny, you got funny clothes on and dark hoodies on. Like all that goofball shit y'all do now with the mask on your face and all that shit, he jumping out. Come here, stupid. He tell you he'll chase you down, he'll chase you down, and then when he catch you, he put his hands on you. He tell you, don't run. The first, our first gun intervention, my man, shout out to Fat Spanky from Hunter Street. He's having a house party. We, we on the block. This is like, this is 1989. Blondie come through, he hop out, threw us against the wall, and gave us an like introduction to the streets. Listen, we see y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We see y'all. We all be dead. We right past y'all. Of getting older now. Grouped up, I get it. You play with those guns, I'm coming. Don't make me chase you. You chase you. And I would truly believe, in my heart for me, that's why I, that's why I never ran around with no guns for. Because one thing back then you went to jail for, you went to jail for violence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can cope with a gun, a robbery, you went to jail for that. Even the one or three, you got work release in six months, but who want to go to jail during six months when you had conversations of mama there in full effect? Oh, who? <laughs> Get on road. I don't want to meet those type of guys. So you didn't want to be in that lane. You didn't want to be in those type of lanes, man. You know what I'm saying? You didn't want to be, you were to say, far away from a mother. Not saying this, I'm trying to say the environment of dudes like mother dear. You wanna be no cop, yo. Cause of the one that three that's sitting straight to El Mayo, you be like Attica. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm fresh off the block. <laughs> These dudes been in here for the last four summers. Y'all know you got them names. You start throwing cookies down the road. And you don't know what you, you don't know what might happen. You already know what I'm saying? So that's the ever of that we're talking about. Come on, that generation of jail was still going on. You know what I'm saying? That generation, that generation of a pen is still going on. You talk about that. You may have got a one in three for a body, or a, a, a gun, or a robbery, not a body. But dudes was making a parole board on homicide. The tacky took all out of the way. He said, oh, no, that's a tough little bang bang. Ain't doing violence, can't get no work release. They were sending dudes that had work release back to the mountains. Yes, and that was that ever. <laughs> There wasn't no gang shit. Dude, I'm scared to go to jail because you got blood. You got Trinidadios. You got the Latin Kings. And you got two Nietas. 
That was in the conversation back then. 86, 87, 88. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Let me see how real it was. My man, rest in peace, Mandy. Mandy loved Walker for Walsh. Rest in peace to Mandy beloved Walker for Walsh, man. Cubby, I gotta get at you. I gotta have my man Cubby, you know what I'm saying? His brother, you know what I'm saying? He had jail problems. He used to go back and forth to the penitentiary. So he would sit and tell us these jail stories. Just like, ooh. It was like an action packed movie. Like, you paid $20 to hear some jail shit. Like, yo, and he took some sneakers and. We had to put him in a cobra clutch and we knocked him in the head eight times. And yo, son, I had to, you know what I'm saying? You know, in, 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 in certain spots, we only, we only do raises. We got knives, nigga. Like, woo. In the back of my mind, how can I not lead a, how can I not go to those type of places? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they was crazy. When Karis made one made that song, Love's Gonna Get You, you really have blocks that had crack walls. This is no lie. This is, yo, this is, this is real shit. Building versus Brooklyn. Some certain some, some parts of Brooklyn was building versus building. Aunt versus uncle. Yo, this crack shit was crazy. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Those are the type of niggas that back then the booty bands was in style in jail. It wasn't shunned upon like how niggas shun upon now. It was style. Niggas just knew how to fuck with them. Like you playing spades with a mother dead don't look good for you. Like, yo, I was up north, son. Yo, son, son your man's sick, son. You playing spades with mother dead in the yard. Those kind so you just stood away from those conversations. Well. Yellow tops versus black tops. This is how most of the wars start. You getting money on the block, you chilling, you doing whatever you doing. I wake up one day and I go, I lost my job, I'm ready to hustle. I'm going to go uptown and buy me an eight ball. I go uptown, I spend seventy dollars for a ball. I come back. I go to Huntington Street, Alexa, Leslie, get me some bottles, a raisin, a mill. I start cutting some shit up like a, like Wake Con the Chef. Like, like, I'm, like, like I'm cooking that, you know, Japanese spots of fire in it. I start doing the, the cutting the castles, shit, 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 get crazy. Going for the building. These niggas have been hustling here for the last two summers. And I decide. I bring some petty shit up. Nigga, remember we was in junior high school and I fucked you up, son? Nigga ain't telling me nothing. He ain't say I can eat. I go to one of the main workers, listen, nigga, I'm about to shut this shit down. <laughs> Yo, this is how this shit start. I'm about to shut this shit down. We either in or out, but I'm shutting it down. At that, that's my building. You can't be in front of my building no more. So you catch me with the worker first. You gotta intimidate the worker first. This is how this shit starts. So my intimidation to the worker is, he looked at me, what the fuck you talking about, nigga? I'm gonna tell you something, man. You punk ass boss, you better tell that nigga, fuck him, play with me, man. I got the eight ball. I'm cutting dope on the sleeve side, you know, running around, crack into my building. Yo, son, let me holler at you, you know what I'm saying? So now you're like, yo, Zeke, you buggy, man. Nasty. Nah, because you know, the, the first week they arrived, like, come on, Zeke, you wild. Yeah, they, they're going, he ain't gonna keep doing it anyway, so we ain't worried about that shit. Now I made it up, it takes six grams. Now I'm ready to beat the work of it. Now I'm ready to remove. Listen, once I get to the six, that's how these wars start. Once I get to the six, I sort of took over my hands. Yo, boy, the mother. And I took him, spit the nigga face. But yo, son, but don't play with me, man. So now the niggas in my, now the niggas in my building. Not my building. I'm just giving you a perception of how shit happens. And so I walk in the building, I'm face fucking something. Yo, nigga, what the fuck? Yo, son, why are you always looking at me? So you, you gotta find a reason to beef with the worker. <laughs> you're like, yo, son, you always looking at me. You're like, you got a problem or something? Son, what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? So he's going to go to the boss, to his boss. Yo, this nigga Zeke is bugging, my nigga. Like, every time he come in the building, he give me these weird vibes. So when I see son, I create the fake beef. Remember, the, it's, I created this drama. Yo, son, your man keep looking at me like, I can't come in out of the building. Like, yo, son, you told me I can't click or something? You're like, yo, see what you talking about, yo, son. I'm telling you, man. You know what I mean? You my nigga. I love you and everything. 
how this shit start. We tell you how the drug war start. You know what I'm saying? You acting funny, my nigga? I bet. Yo, son. Let me get 125 from back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how it happens. Now my, he, my man, he was eating violent. What the fuck you mean I'm violated? So now I got to try to embarrass him in front of his workers. Get out my building. And then it starts. Yeah. Once I slapped him, it was a full-fledged war. By the time I got to 150 grams, <laughs> I'm going from two shootings. You know what I'm saying? That's how I'm telling you. This is how crazy this shit is. You just don't open up. Dude, just open up. Even, even if you had the, the gram amount. And that's how shit happens. Or sometimes, some of the, some of the, some of the wars be, you got some bullshit working and niggas down the block you got butter. And you ain't making no money. So now you find a reason to go at it with these niggas. Like, man, fuck them niggas, man. They keep you on that block anyway. And it, that creates a war, bro. Exactly. Right after the slap, what's up? Exactly. After the slap, what's up? You got to slap them. You got to embarrass the boss in front of the workers. That's the whole goal. Yo, son, what I took? Yo, son, you took it to like that. Bang. Then the slap from heaven. I can tell you about the slap that saved my life. If y'all want to know about the slap that saved my life, I can tell you about the slap that saved my life. I wasn't a victim, though, but I, I was there. Drug war. Nigga come up from jail. Got those size on him. <laughs> exactly. You had to take that. So, got some size on him. He told my man, exactly. Now go get your boss. You know what I'm saying? So now he comes to my man's. He took his macho man, Jimmy Savage, shit to us. Yo, what he gonna do? And take some top. All that shit is amusing to us. What? Huh? I'm like, but it ain't affecting our pockets. He he trying to do the group talking shit. Us and we and up you and you know the you know that group conversation we ain't a part of what you're there. Like he keeps saying us, my nigga. You don't just try to catch on to what he's getting at. But all in all, we know that there's a distraction. This Jerry Curl nigga, he got curls in his head, skinny nigga. Skinny dude, he ain't that skinny. We done seen him chase some of the illest dudes around. So now, this is this is, this wasn't even four year old's power. Like we, we we wasn't trying to pin one against the other. We just happened to beat it. So now look. The guy with the curl, guy with the curl, <laughs> skinny nigga. Some of y'all may know as yo, yo, yo can fight. Now this guy has some size on me. We sitting there, size on me, shit ain't even over that. He talking about some real boss talk shit. He taking all the money. He talking all that, that that A's. He's talking that Woods Porter two times shit, yo. I, I, I'm I'm back and boom boom it. Da da da. But he sleeves my man one time. Like, and left my man in Boston, so he already had an animosity. Like his trust level was at all time low. Like nigga, I ain't taking no work. He's gonna try to get over him. He left my man in Boston. Your, your man in Boston. So we mapped. Shout out to my man. That's my, that's my, that's my guy. He pull up. Nigga, I jump it. Not jump it. Deal with the curves. We see him walking ferociously fast. Now we knew. He trying to impress us because he has a little bit of work on the corner. So I guess he won. That that was his, see, that's what I mean. Good point. That was his way of showing us he don't play in front of us. Though we didn't see him chase some niggas around. You know what I'm saying? So now we see first he went on in the yo, yo, what? He has hands on his face. What did I tell you? We looking like, oh, shit, you just came over here with the macho man, man. He said, what you going to do, what you ain't going to do, what we going to do, how we going to take it to the top. He sounded like Frankie Beverly and Mace, my nigga. All, all I needed was somebody. If my man John was downstairs, he could have sang the chorus. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. That's all he had to say, because everything he was saying was, we, us, what you gonna do? I'm telling you, this is facts. Nigga, mad me to dig it, I tell you the story. So, nigga, you, I can see a legend. Well, fuck it, you ain't on parole no more, nigga. Relax, relax, my nigga, relax. Gotta tell niggas your name. Back in front. Shout out to my man Tom Black. Tell your man stop back in front. Boom. Damn. 
hand. I seen the hand go like this. So when I seen the hand go like this, I was like, this shit's gonna get real spooky. So I'm looking, and the hand goes all the way back. Jackie was popping, was popping. The hand was like this. The hand was like, he looked at like a pitch. You know, like Michael, remember Michael Jordan had the dunk? When he was jumping in the dunking contest? The hand went back like this. So we looking like, I'm looking at my man's. We just all like, whatever you do, we hope you don't miss at this point. You know what I'm saying? Some shit going. I ain't gonna find him with the big dick. I'm like, you need somebody to like fuck him up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't disrespect you. But you know you was in the way a little bit. So if you would have missed me, whoop your ass, that might have worked out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it didn't. You swung and you and that shit, like his fingers, his, your fingers swung across my face. Like he didn't slap me, but the I was like, no! No! And he said, blah! Yeah. I was, yo, oh, the Fat Danny joint, um, I guess uh, Fat Danny, he's trying to, he, he, he's saying he wasn't down with the Wild Cowboys, he was down with the competition, and um, he's trying to get his time back, you know what I'm saying, he's been in jail since 1995, he's trying to make a comeback, um, I'm gonna I'm go, I'm gonna take it to the top again, I placed him for the Daily News, that's saying that he's not involved with them, there's a, a thing that came from Gordo from the Wild Cowboys that he got the hundred. You know what I'm saying he's speaking about how people went to court and said he wasn't involved, but they still got him sitting up. Yes. So um, I'm gonna play for you in a second. So he's slapping you. Black eye, black eye. I was like, yo, you just slapped the shit out of this nigga. When he hit the nigga, the nigga like bent to the knee, the knee went down. I seen the shit come in slow motion. The knee went down. I'm like, oh shit. And, and yo, he didn't run, but his soul ran. That's what you know it's real. The nigga's soul ran. I was calling his soul, like, yo, come back. Come get this nigga. Yo, son, come back. Yo, was, this, this is the truth. So after he slapped him, the nigga, you looked at us. So, of course, <laughs> we like, yo, son, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Duke gets up, and then he takes off. He, he bounces. So like, you go see a bitch-ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? And we just sit there like, yo, you, you know what I mean, bitch-ass nigga. I told nigga we are. I told nigga he can't be out. He said how drug war started. The only thing with this nigga was when he we slapped the nigga, once the nigga's soul left, there was no coming back. I mean, there was this, like... You can't record a nigga saw. It took the heart. So when he bent down with the knee, you see, you, you seen the soul go. I was like, yo, son, come back and get your man. Son, get your man like that. He shoot that in his land. He oh, he ran like the nigga you was shooting. That's the worst part about the shit. If you're gonna run, don't, don't run like a nigga shooting. You know what I'm saying? Nigga started sweeping and swerving like a nigga was taking shots, my nigga. I was like, God damn. That's when this shit would have got good. Like how you miss, he's like the fucking you up. I've been one for the books. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. That's my nigga though. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. But I mean, gonna whip your ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, go, go. But that, that, that didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? I just like, ah. But the slap was official. But that's what I mean about drug war. That, that, that could create a war. Some other shit happened, but it had nothing to do with him. But that shit could create a war. Little shit like that. Now back to what he was asking with the content. This is Fat Danny. Shit like that, 
You only learn, those are the exclusive words you learn in jail. Jail words. Like, I never said a nigga getting beat the fuck up. Dude, that was some horrific shit you did last night. Like, we don't use words like that. That was all jail words. Like, yo, son, you could have excluded me. <laughs> yo, son, you could have excluded me from that little beef you had with the niggas on 107th Street. You know what I mean? You had to put me in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just wasn't no, the type of wordplay that wasn't coming out of our mouths until you went to penitentiaries. You know what I'm saying? I definitely never heard overstand, understand, or Peter stand before they came up with Jerry Zeke. I overstand. Like, what the fuck you mean you overstand? Overstand what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 58 and one third year sentence in New York State while the actual perpetrators walk free. I am Danny Rincon and I have been behind bars in 1993 for a crime I did not commit. The crime was a horrific drug territory dispute that resulted in four deaths. My alibi witnesses include the mother and brother of one of the victims. Hold up, hold up. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's Joffrey the Mac. Joffrey the Mac. The same, is that the same guy? I don't know if you slapped the manager, but I think you put some type of hands on the nigga. You put some type of, you did some horrific shit to the 50 cent manager or lawyer, whatever the fuck his name is. Did y'all, did y'all, in the words of jail words, was it allegedly, was it jar niggas who stomp on his head three times? <laughs> Playing with the jeans and t-shirts and all shit? Yo, I'm telling you, it sounds crazy. You say you said horrific crimes. Listen, horrific crimes. Like, like, yo, son, I heard some horrific shit happened to you last night. What happened? You already even whipped your ass. It was some horrific shit, bro. <laughs> The actual shooters have testified <laughs> to the home, excluding me from the crime. And a third man has come forward, admitting yeah. his involvement in the shooting and denying mine. Salute, salute, Yet, shot. Now is it that I am still serving a 158 and one third year sentence in New York State while the actual perpetrators walk free? I am dead gone and I have been behind bars for a crime I did not commit. Now, I'll be honest with you, home. man. We'll be honest with you. Shout out to Jaffa the in the building. New York's in the building. Dice is in the building. Jaffe's in the building. New York's in the building, man. I'm going to tell you, man. We and you really use words like that. Like, if I had a problem with somebody, I didn't go, yo, beloved, um, this guy's playing perpendicular. Some type of, we know the big words. You know, I would go to somebody and go, listen, simple, it's like a simple, it's like a one, two, three step thing. Like, yo, son, we're going to whip his ass. We're like, come on the block, go fuck this nigga up. Those are words. Definitely shout, definitely shout out to, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying to Sleazy's. Who there he went in the building, man. Um, but yeah, he got 158 years of sentence. He's trying to get home. His father just passed away, one of his relatives. Definitely rest in peace to them, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we come from the seven, man. You know, sometimes, you know, this just this this just like these are reminders of what we of what we weave, a lot of us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all may call us idiots for catching the two to six, but it could have been worse, right? 158, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Some of us say, yo, son, that's dumb, my nigga. You, you caught that five flat. But who knows what would have happened if we didn't catch that five flat, bro? This is a dirty game, man. That mass incarceration shit, they got dudes fighting. Look, look at man do, man do, like 300 years. He gave back like 200. Two and some change. Imagine having 300 years over your head, bro. He had to fight the knock a lot of that off. And still had to do 30 out of 30 something odd years out of So you gotta salute them, man. You gotta salute dudes, man. Everybody, that mass incarceration is what did it to us, man. We, we ain't know no better. We didn't know. You no, know, see, we watch dudes so ham on, but we ain't know. We see, like I told you, it was a simple plan. Yo, to you and two of your friends, I said to the woman, go, what are we gonna do today? Let's buy some crap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For what? Let's open up. I got the bottles. I, know how to, I got the... Yo, we used to put five grams of triple beans. This is how we was wasting our life. That's what little niggas was doing until they realized, yo, niggas had triple beans. <laughs> Playing with the triple beans. <laughs> Talking about, yo, I'm on a low. <laughs> Paul, let's keep the doors open. You, wait, wait, wait. You couldn't booth a triple, a, 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 a fucking triple beam, my nigga. My man's fucked me up allegedly with this shit. 
He said, hey, this shit was legal. That's how like, this shit felt like it was legal. Like, just allegedly a nigga I might know. You know what I'm saying? Shit shitting all around, shit for beams sitting there. I'm like, this, this shit is crazy. The police come up in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bottles, allegedly some guns, all type of craziness. You know what I'm saying? I said, hey, don't come to my house. Now I'm good. My nigga, I'm gonna stay down with something. Just gonna stay downstairs, my brother. I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you can't you can only beat with so many charges. Guns, drugs, scales, knives. You know what I'm saying? You can only you 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 you're only gonna beat but only but so many. Ronald, that's what it is. It's just like you go downtown and you know, as fucking to say this, they sound a little racist. We used to go downtown to rob white boys. Like, I'm fucking that. I don't care where you at, Queens, South Jamaica, Merrick, you niggas will find yourself in the store of your Queens by where the Greeks is at digging pockets. Don't do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We all did it. And then niggas started going to jail. Then it wasn't cool no more. Then a plan comes. Because you always knew we couldn't sell a hammer. You, always, you had the respect for the old heads when they came to hammer. You know, like, man, we just can't open up. They're going to kill us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we just knew that. Quills, fuck, I could, I, I, I could fuck Warren up. I've been fucking Warren up since elementary school. I'll whip Warren ass. You know what I'm saying? There's the difference. The different element. Exactly, American Towers. You know what I'm saying? You know how that shit went? Niggas go pick an area, zip code. Where we going? We're going to Bayside. For what? We ain't going to trick or treat, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, definitely, I appreciate anybody pulled up for the content, man. This is really for Fat Danny. We just brought you back in the days. Gave, gave me a little bit of Zeke Black. Some, some of my storytelling. Um, I got this Streets is Watching series. This is where I'm moving. This is where I'm moving forward to. I hope y'all like what I'm giving you. I'm giving you the audio. And just some, you know, just some of my narration. And you know what I'm saying? Check out all the content. I know I interviewed May Ling from Crown Courts TV. Um, she's making a comeback. I got a lot of contact, contact coming from them. Um, I'm also going to put out the, um, well, one of, one, of, one of the shows that I contributed to was the uh, world. I do the idea of the crown, the crown. How about doing something on world? And he did it. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. But, but, one, maybe, maybe some of the stories I made a contribute, that's one of the ones that I really enjoyed. So I'm gonna bring that to you. I believe Maylene did the voiceover for, for the world case. So I'm gonna bring you to the world case. And I'm also, as crazy as it sounds, I got the documentary this July coming out with the Supreme team. Um, Murder Inc. BET is doing the Supreme thing um, in August. Luca is Luca Sin, Sin, the guy from, from, from Fat Cat and them. He's doing a court case. Actually, I'm doing a court case paperwork, the testimony of the trial. I did that the other day. And, um, but you can get all the transcripts off of, it's just, it's, it's actually the testimony at the trial. Um, Crown Courts TV. Um, disclaimer, I'm gonna have to say it, I'm gonna say it though, he gives, he gives me permission to use his content. Which is real because we, we don't say you just built a friendship through networking and building. So um, yeah, be tuned in, but definitely check out Crown Court TV. It's there. Put Supreme Team. He got he got all the testimony. Son from Harlem. Harlem looking real bad right now. Harlem looking real bad right now. Son from Harlem is the worst. Son. Queen turned the nigga to a killer in two weeks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Allegedly, he turned son to a killer in two weeks. Met him in a club. Jopping is not a lot, bro. He met him in a club. He was like, hey, this shit. I got, I got some of the content up already, but for you crazy niggas, you know what I'm saying? Hell I'm saying? Got, yes, 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 yes. That's my boy, man. My man, my man, Crown Prince. You know what I'm saying? I may lean to that thing. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, this lane is for us. It's for us, man. And definitely by me knowing a couple of dudes that was down with it and knowing how New York was and how the, how, how the temperature was. So, um, before I go, man, definitely I send mines. You know, you got some people that like Fat Danny, just people who don't like Fat Danny. That's just how the scam goes. But the man been in jail this long. I don't want nobody sitting in jail. They ain't got to sit in jail for you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So they said that Danny words. He called from the penitentiary. Talking to Gordo. I think it was Gordo. Gordo posted it like a couple of weeks ago. I was supposed to interview his brother, but I'm going I'm to get, get it together. I've been busy running around working. You know, I got this J.O.B. <laughs> but the people, yeah, they put it out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? 
Crown Court TV, that's a fact. Johnny put it out. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, love. Lobby. Here it is, my man Fabio. Okay, okay. Since my conviction in 1995, two of the actual shooters have testified up the hole, excluding me from the crime. And a third man has come forward, admitting his involvement in the shooting, and denied mine. Yet, how is it that I am still serving a 158 and 130 year sentence in New York State while the actual perpetrators walk free? I am Danny Lincoln. I have been behind bars in 1993 for a crime I did not commit. The crime was a horrific, virtually dispute. Now, um, his niece's name is Ash times three. She put together a petition. Um, if you guys want to um, network with her, um, I'm going to see if I can get it in the chat somewhere. But Ash, let me see right here. I don't think you see it. Um, Ash 3. You know what I'm saying? You know, we, nobody deserves to sit in jail. You know what I'm saying? So I would say, man, definitely, you know, take the time out. We all got loved ones. Just not the fat Danny, but it's a bunch of people that we know that's truly unjust. Just in jail for all the wrong reasons and wrong purposes. And may have got case slayed. You know what I'm saying? So... You just, you just, we got, we got, we got to pray to God, man. We got to pray, you know what I'm saying? And, and I told you, man, like, you know, you know, some people might say, yo, people, people, we, you know, don't appreciate life, man. But, you know, some of these jail sentences for the street dudes may have saved our lives, man. May have really saved some of our lives, kept us out the mix. Even though being in jail is the worst thing in the world, jail may have saved a lot of us. Be beyond with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I see a bunch of them dudes up north. They standing strong, man. You got a lot of dudes that would have cracked already. Is that free to free to Don Larry? Yo, that's funny. One of my best videos, I got a picture of you and Larry yo, on the thumbnail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but definitely free Larry yo, man. You know what I'm saying? I just heard some craziness in the penitentiary. They said two people died. Somebody died in Green Haven, and somebody died also in um, Comstock. Um, my homeboy, a good friend of mine named Trey, you, you may or may know him, he was in transit, and I guess, um, he's in the box. Yes, 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 I got the picture, that shit went crazy. <laughs> you know, see, you're, you're, you're a popular guy, child, you're, you're definitely a popular guy, you know what I'm saying? And, um, so W Free Scar, you know what I'm saying, he's in the box right now for some crazy reasons, but... Look, he was in transit in Green Haven, and the day he left, boom, somebody, I guess somebody died in the yard. So, and, and these, these are maxes, these are medians. Comes like somebody died in the yard. So, you know, you got any loved ones in these jails, go see them. Go check your family, man. Go check on your family. Anything can happen any day. Definitely shout out Miss Playful. Definitely feed the wolves, Miss Playful. In the building, definitely. She appreciate it. Definitely shout out the wifey, Southern Bell. You know what I'm saying? Definitely go see your people, man. Go see your loved ones, the people that love you. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, let's do it. Let's do it, Jaffa. Whatever you're ready, man. We do. We, we, we. My my IG is Z Black Feed the Wolves. You can jump in any time, and we can just you know make some shit up. We use around fifty cent from the beginning. I mean, that's just, that, that's a story alone. We ain't got too much all the blood shit. We just about you know that's you being in the music industry, being around Joel Santana first album, second album. Like you was, we were not as as crazy as the streets have done people like like they look Jaffe. But you believe it or not, he was around for all that stack bundle stuff. He was around for when Little Wayne was running around with the Dipset in New York. Like he was around all this shit. You know what I'm saying? He was. You know what I'm saying? This is this is. This is, so he's a part of the culture of hip hop that blew up. It's just that he jumped with somebody, they, they, they beat a nigga up and 50 got a little emotional, you know what I'm saying? He was around for all that Stack Bun. I mean, I think about it. I, the first time I heard Stack Bun was he was running with, I believe, Kev Webinar, Desert Storm. That's the, that's the Stack Bun I remember. Then he, he went to, you know, the Dipset situation. He was around for all that. That's a portion of hip hop alone. A different time in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So that that that, that alone right there is a unique story. He was there from the mixtape from the back door, and he was getting punched in the face. 
he was there, he was doing, he's around for all that. So all that's hip hop, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You never get credit. He was around for all that. You might just, you know what I'm saying? He was around for that time in hip hop. When Lil Wayne made Carter One, he did a lot of his, he did a couple of visuals in New York. He was running around with New York crazy. We're talking about a time when, if y'all do remember, when all you heard on the radio was Lil Wayne because he was on Everybody Remix. Everybody Remix, boom, everybody's song, Wayne was on it. So when he made the Carter Two, it was a rap. That shit went to the fucking moon. Wayne was in New York a lot doing that. He was, he was, he was in New York building it. He was playing that Universal Records deep, you know what I'm saying? So like I told you, the time in hip hop, man. You know what I'm saying? But what comes with the streets is the penitentiary. What comes with the penitentiary is some dirty things, man. You know, the gang, the gang, the gang culture, the street culture. Um, if you can do that job for my, my, my IG is Z E Black Feed the Wolves. Z, Z E Black Feed the Wolves. We definitely, we definitely. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do something on the KKK soon, of course. Because the KKK, um, I'm gonna do it now, but I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna give you uh, what, what I think. The KKK transformed from what we see them street naked individuals into politics. They became politicians. They became cops. They became firemen. They became soldiers in the army. They became everything that became power. That's why in certain states and certain cities, they got the power still. They, they even infiltrated the LGBT, the, 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 the alternative lifestyle. They even infiltrated that with their principles and their morals and their integrity and the shit that they talk about all day. They infiltrated that. They infiltrate everything that to keep the power. Just to keep power. Just to feel powerful. So we have a conversation on the powerful. Yeah. What you do? Is this fell back? Yeah, they got congressmen in place. You heard what Mary Miller said. You heard what she said live on stage. You know what I'm saying? You heard what she said live on stage. Trump, thank you. Such and such. Boom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I do got to go party, people. Um, I didn't want to make this the Z Black show. Yep, this is this is not the Z Black show. This is about Fat Danny, Free Fat Danny. Jockey was in the building. Cuzzo Dice was in the building. A1, one was in the building. A1 in the building. Plus Playful in the building. You know what I'm saying? Ronald's, Ronald's here. G-Wall's in the building. Jaron's in the building. You know what I'm saying? And, and we just, we just politicking. Every shot to my man, you all love you, bro. You know I love you. Jimmy Tom Black and all of them. You know what I'm saying? From, from, from Wash, Washington Projects, East Harlem. Name, name for the Lex, my man, Sonny. Check out my IG. You know what I'm saying? Salute, salute, salute. We had this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I'm going to put his people's name, information. I'm going to holler at them. I'm going to put the IG up. You know what I'm saying? But check on your people, man. Check on your people, too. Don't think because your cousin got 25 years of life that the police did everything right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's just about rising to the top, man. Rising and taking us to the top. With that being said, I salute y'all. Have a good day. Have a blessed day. Free day. You know what I'm saying? Lexa Walsh. Carver Projects, the whole Ace Hall and El Barrio, rest in peace, Superman. Shout out to my um the, the Hill Ho crew. Shout out to my man, Spoke of PT 131, W free all the Ewoks, free all the sleazies. You know what I'm saying? We here, party people, you know what I'm saying? And with that being said, man, you know what I'm saying? Check on your people, man. Check on your people, check on your loved ones, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of times you don't do that. And this is how they get lost in the sauce. Man. Now, this is what the newspaper said about him, you know what I'm saying? This is Fat Danny right here in the courtroom, 1995. So definitely, just get in tune with the people. This is real towards Fat Danny right here. That's why I play the audio so y'all can hear, hear, hear this. It's, it's more, you know what I'm saying? This is serious, man. Like, some things are just serious, man.
Some things are just a little more serious than others, man. Um, definitely do. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely, I got some good pictures up on my on my IG. Check it out. Zeke Black Feet for Wolves. I got some joints. I got some DMX. It's a celebrity week. I'm going to post a bunch of pictures of me and a bunch of celebrities. Or uh, hood celebrities, rapping celebrities, dudes that, that I felt in my life helped push the culture forward. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Shout out to my man P. You know, God's the King. Shout out to Queens. Shout out to my man Corey King. Man, CK out there, you know what I'm saying? Um, just do the door. Yeah, shout out to the 050 China Movement for having me up there on the platform the other day. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. You heard? I definitely, I definitely appreciate that. Because a lot of times, you know, people don't let people on the platforms. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you allow people on your platform, and that's dope. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 a, lot, a lot of people don't do that. So I definitely appreciate that. So definitely, um. This is some shopping. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, definitely Cloud Chain is my guy. Yeah, we got some things going, we got some things going this summer. The rest of the summer, I got the, you got the Nas joint pulling up out here in St. Louis. Man convicted in Wild Cowboys quadruple murder says he was pinned with the wrong crack gang. Fat Danny. Notorious gang and terror Daniel. Fat Danny Rincon is fighting for his freedom. Rincon's legal team claims he was wrongly pinned to a 1991 quadruple slaying that was carried out by competing crack dealers while he was really working for a warring crew. Rincon, 43 who was sentenced in 1995 to 158 years to life, says he was not a bad boy of the Red Top Gang, a group dubbed the Wild Cowboys that terrorized Beekman Avenue in the Bronx in the 1980s and 1990s while raking in $16 million a year. Instead, he rolled with Orange Top, a rival group, he says. Lawyers for Rincon, including one who helped free Derek Deacon in Brooklyn last year, submitted statements from admitted participants in the quad murders saying Rincon wasn't involved in the December 16, 1991, drug territory strike. Other witnesses say in statements that Rincon was on a call with his jailed brother when shots were fired. Attorney Patrick Joyce, who filed a lengthy motion in May, wrote that Rincon's false connection to the quad murders led to spillover prejudice and wrongful convictions on another gang murder and conspiracy charges. He's asking Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Daniel Fitzgerald to toss the quad slay convictions and order a new trial on all others. Prosecutor Jody Kane fired back in court papers, saying eyewitnesses directly placed defendant at the crime scene playing an active role in the deadly ambush. She said Rincon was a wild cowboy from 1988 when he managed crack sales and practiced his marksmanship with other red top employees by shooting at passing cars and pedestrians. Damn. That's, you know what I'm saying? He went back to, ah, right, he wasn't done with them now, but in 88, he was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but in 88, when he was getting chased in the building, when he was getting chased in the building, he, he was managing for them. So, um, you know, this, 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 you know, just you know, free Danny, man. You know, free all, free all combats in the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's that's the newspaper, New York Post. Actually, not New York Post, Daily News. Um, I got to go, though. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for pulling up. Hope you enjoyed this segment. Free Fat Danny. I got to change the thumbnail picture. And um, leave some comments if you like. You know what I'm saying? If you're known, show some love. It's his nieces out there, his family, so love them. One of his, I think his father just passed away, so you know, you know what I'm saying? They did just grieve him a couple weeks ago. We're gonna rest in peace to that. And with that being said, man, there's nothing wrong with a man fighting for his freedom. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a man fighting for his freedom. Seven shots to my man, Crown Court CB. You know what I'm saying? And in birds, and it's the, 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 the toys words of him. Um, find some you know, time, find something legal to do, you heard? I have something legal to do. That being said, peace. Definitely shout out to White Group, Southern Bell, West Side, St. Louis. St. Louis, the West Side, you up? Peace.